In May of 2023, I was able to return to my off-grid property in upstate New York. In this video, I want to talk about the first project, or one of the first projects, that we did on the property, and that is replacing the old well pump. I needed to replace the original pump that I purchased when I purchased the land because I didn't know how old it was, and also it likely ran on 230 volt power, and I don't have 230 volt power on the property as yet. So I needed a, a pump that would run from a generator that I could run on site. And I found a Vivor deep well submersible pump for just over $100, very reasonable, that looked like it would do the job. This is how we went through uh, uninstalling or removing the old uh, well equipment, including the pitless adapter, the pipe, and the well pump, and then replaced it with that newer 110 volt version. We had a couple surprises along the way, as you'll see. So in this first section, we're preparing the uh, site. We're going to take the tools over that we need, and uh, we will just remove this well Camera? house. The well is cleverly disguised underneath here, yeah. under the well house. There's a little enclosure that goes over the top of the pipe to keep uh, most of the bad weather out. I mean, it's open on the sides, so it's more decorative than anything but it does keep critters away. Um, we also have to remove the old cap. I won't be able to reuse that because it, it is designed for use with the pitless adapter where the electricity comes up from underground. So I bought a new um, pipe closure, uh, slightly different. It's a compression pipe closure that goes down into the pipe. And uh, as you tighten up the bolts, it squeezes out a rubber bushing that holds it tight inside the pipe. Uh, that allows me to come directly out the top of the pipe with both the electricity and the uh, water so I can apply a faucet, which you'll see later. Hey, all right, so first part of getting the uh, pump in the well is to get the old pump out of the well. So uh, I have to make a tool for that. This has been done a million times on YouTube, so this is not rocket science, and you can see many other videos where people have probably done a better job than me, but, you know, we'll proceed. So, it's going to basically create a T-pipe that is going to screw onto, in theory, pitless adapter. That's about four feet down below ground. That keeps the water pipe from being above the frost line so that it's not exposed to extreme cold and doesn't freeze during the winter. Anybody in Florida? That's that's the way you got to live up here. The well pipe is six inches in diameter. You'll see that shortly. So the handles help you to you know, lever on this thing, but mostly they're just to keep this from falling down inside of the well so I don't have a piece of black pipe at the bottom of my well where it's going to get in the way. And then these cool little rubber caps that protect the thread are now going to protect my hands, although I did get rid of the burrs on the end. I cut this pipe in half to make two nine inch sections. It just has to be big enough so they can't go down through the well. So anything with more than six inches. And that is that very complicated, highly technical tool, a T of pipe. Um, I also have an additional, I didn't know what size pitless adapter. Based on my research, they're either one inch, which is the most common, and that's what this pipe is, or one and a quarter inch. So I have a nipple that'll thread onto this to take it from one inches up to one and a quarter inches if this is bigger than I expect it to be. And if it's bigger than that, uh, we're going to have to figure it out. Appropriate pipes help. So in order for us to remove the pitless adapter, we had to find it first. And it is in the well, but we weren't exactly sure where the pipe comes out. So uh, the water is not the clearest. It's rusty because it's a steel pipe that's driven into the ground. Um, that rust doesn't extend past the first 10 feet, though. 
Um, we thought it was 125 feet deep, but as you'll see, we were mistaken on that. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be So to make a long story short, the well that I previously thought was 125 feet deep max wound up being 400 feet deep. The pipe stretched all the way down my driveway almost to the main road. So I talked in a previous video about possibly doing a video about how I plan these things and honestly it's no more complicated than what you're looking at right here. A simple lined piece of yellow paper where I try to envision the entire project from start to finish, top to bottom, and what I'm going to need to accomplish that. Um, as you can see, I've diagrammed out how the top of the well will work, um, how the well pump will attach, and then an approximation of costs in there. I tried to estimate as well as I could. Um, I actually could have saved myself on this project uh, the cost of the black roll pipe because I wound up not using it. Um, I had plenty of well pipe uh, at the 400 foot depth that was exactly the right size. So I just um, cut that to 125 feet because I had 125 feet of wire uh, and then I wound up actually cutting like a couple of feet off of it so I had a pigtail to connect the electrical box to. But you'll see that in the upcoming section where we install the new well pump. So it's the next day. We got the well pump out. It took about it took about an hour for the three of us to get the well pump out, dragged out. What I initially thought was 100, maybe 150 feet of pipe, wound up being 400 feet of pipe. It just kept coming out and coming out and coming out, which is good. It's actually black roll pipe. It's in good shape. Um, I had purchased 100 feet of black roll pipe, but... Um, with a perfectly good 400 foot length, I've got 125 feet of wire. So I'm gonna get another 25 feet of well. Um, and that'll give me probably another, I don't know, 17 to 30 gallons, anywhere in there. Um, I already have, with uh, 125 feet, it's uh, like 150 gallons of water. So I'm gonna be using um, a 30 gallon barrel for my shower situation. I'll talk about that in a later video. And then we've gone through maybe 10, 15 gallons of water in three or four days. So water usage is gonna be minimal. Um, you saw in the video previously, hopefully, that I was using my, my uh, little battery operated pump with a six foot hose on it to uh, to clear the well so that we could see the pitless adapter. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't want to dig down five feet to get to the pitless adapter to run the, the pipe. So I've plugged it and put it back in to keep surface water intrusion from getting in um, because it's essentially a hole in the side of the well hooked to a pipe, which is probably cut off on the other end. So there's probably surface water in it, which I don't want to contaminate my well. Um, so I pulled the pitless adapter out, disconnected the pump, 
and uh, plugged it, plugged the hole at the bottom where the pump was, the line was attached. And I will, um, and then I put it back in. So it essentially closed off the line that uh, might uh, allow surface water to intrude. Um, we were down about six or seven feet. By the time we pulled the well pump and all of the line out, the amount of displacement that those things did, we were down, I couldn't see the water. So it was probably 10 or 15 feet at least. And so I was a little concerned because I don't know what the recovery rate of the well is. Recovery rate of the well is when you drain it, how quickly does it actually recover and fill back up with water? So I was a little concerned because I'd never done anything like that. We finished at maybe seven o'clock last night, 7.30 last night, and we were 15 or 20 feet below the ground level. And when I woke up this morning, this is what greeted me. So the static pressure of the well, the static pressure of the well is enough to actually recover to where it was, which is essentially a ground level before, and then push past that by two and a half feet. This is a temporary pump. It's designed to be operated on a 110 volt power system so I can run it off my generator while I'm here doing this kind of stuff and enhancing the place. And um, once I get the permanent well and go down 400 feet again, I'm never gonna lack for water. There's a ton of water on this property between the amount of uh, water in the well because of the depth and the fast recovery. The spring, I have a spring up here that is, uh, I've got cattails behind my tent. So I actually have to figure out how to divert that spring because that will cause um, water intrusion in my basement eventually. Having water, I think I talked about in one of my other videos, water can be a benefit and a, and a, uh, a detriment. So having water available is great, but when you have too much water, like I have right now with that spring overflowing, you gotta find ways to get rid of it. Otherwise it will wash out like it's washed out my driveway. But um, when you have too much water, you gotta actually take care of it and maintain it so that it doesn't do damage. But it's a good problem to have. All right, I gotta get to putting this pump together. You can see I've already got the I already have the backflow preventer and I've stepped it down from the uh, two inch or inch and a half outlet that the pump had down to a one inch with a hose barb and a backflow preventer so the water will go up and it won't be able to fall back. Um, and this is where it all starts. I'll wire up the electrical. I'll uh, get some clamps on that pipe and heat it up and slide it over the hose bibs and cinch it down and then we're off to the races. I should have a well pump in today, a working well pump in today. I shocked the well yesterday. So it has a powerful chlorine scent right now. And so I'll probably drop the well in and do a, a real small test just to make sure that it actually works and then um, turn it off and let it sit for a good 24 to 36 hours. Like I said, around seven o'clock tonight, we'll be 24. By the time I get up in the morning, I should be able to pump this well out, get rid of all the chlorine scent, and we'll have drinkable water. Um, I have a bacterial, a bacteriological grade filter that's gonna go in line. So, um, and I have water filtration systems that you can drink water directly out of a swamp if you want to. I actually drank water from this well last year before I shocked it through a filtration system and I was fine. I think once it's shocked and we run it through that uh, HEPA filter, or bacterial grade filter, uh, we're gonna have some nice cold, it's about 45 degree water. Nice, cold, clean, perfectly drinkable water. But I got a little work to do before I can get there. Okay, so I've got my watertight connections. These are custom shrink tubes. I don't know if you can see that, but there's almost like a hot glue material inside. And then you heat it up, and when you shrink the tube, it melts and makes this entire joint waterproof. So you'll see some of the copper is showing on that joint. It doesn't matter. This is completely waterproof from these two and a half inches. Uh, so this is the wire that came on the pipe. 
and this is the wire that I replaced it with. You can tell it is a much heavier duty wire. And that's just because the level of current that it's carrying. I don't like the idea of, you know, 125 feet of this really super thin wire. So I'm stepping the wire up. This will get hot as it runs a lot of power through it, but it's in a well that's at a constant 45 degrees. So I'm not concerned about the well pump or the wire overheating the smaller wire. And the 12 gauge that I put on is absolutely not going to overheat. It's, it's really thick. So next I need to uh, wrap these connections. I've got some rubber duct, uh, rubber tape. It's designed specifically for waterproofing marine connections. And then this entire thing will get wrapped in electrical tape as well. And then I need to, um, those little ears that you see, like right here on the top of the pump, I need to get a piece of 16 inch stainless steel cable through there. And uh, that and the wire is going to get taped every three feet up the pipe. The steel cable is a safety rope and that's to keep the, if, if something should happen to the, both the pipe connection and the electrical connection, that is a final safety connection to keep the pump from falling into the 400 foot deep hole in the ground. Um, so pitter patter, let's get at her. All right, so that joint, this rubberized tape is overkill. The, uh, the, the heat shrink tubing is sealed the whole thing, but it's now doubly sealed and it's gonna be triply sealed. I'm gonna go from here to here with electrical tape, a solid band. And then uh, I will also connect some, elect put some electrical tape over the top of the hose clamps that hold the hose to that pipe barb that you see there. Okay. So that joint is definitely waterproof. It is heat sealed with shrink tape that has a special marine grade shrink tape. It is rubber taped and then it is electrical taped and, with, and it's up two inches on either side of the connection up the wire. So that is solid. Next, that beast. So you can see this one's not going to be smooth, but you can see the um, connections are there. We've got the electrical connections. Um, we've got a uh, restraining cable, which is that silver thing. And then the two fasteners for the hose, which my mind is drawn a blank right now. But all of that is taped up and now we'll go every three feet and put wraps of electrical tape for the next 125 feet. Okay, uh, as they say in the industry, here's the money shot. I, I don't know what industry that is, but... Yeah, it went down significantly. It's just so weird. Oh, it went down because I pulled the pitless.